Hello and welcome to IIT Kanpur's Dialogues with Legends. I am blessed to be in the company of an inspiring scientist, Dr. Saroj Chudamani Gopal, a medical doctor and educationist. A Padma Shri and Dr. B.C. Roy uh, awardee, she has had a remarkable journey. She has become the first woman postgraduate student in her Agra college and then went on to become the first Indian woman with a super speciality in pediatric surgery, also the first woman vice chancellor of Lucknow's King George's Medical University. Today, at a young age of 79, she joins us as an envigored student all over again as she has recently joined the PhD program at the Institute. Welcome, ma'am, and thank you so much for giving us your time. I never realized that I should be making so much of a news. Anyway, uh, it's nice that uh, you have decided to talk to me over the issue about my PhD. Uh, ma'am, let's start with first uh, something that all of us want to know that uh, what made you uh, excited or what made you join and come back to study all over again at this stage of your life? You know, uh, I think nobody would be 100% satisfied with what one has achieved. I feel I am an atom or rather I would say I am an electron who is always um, mobile, not static and vigorously mobile. Uh, I don't count on age. Uh, there are dreams which have remained unfulfilled and I don't want to die with my dreams not getting fulfilled. That's what has been made me come over here. So what has this dream been? Yeah. There's something which I have been dreaming about as early as 1968. Wow. That time I was just 23. I saw for the first time a baby, a very cute newborn baby with the, sometimes God makes them extra good looking those who are having some disability so this cute baby still comes on in my thoughts in my dreams all the time this baby was born with a defect on his vertebral column at the back and was not able to move the limbs and when i was so shocked you know so uh, and there was a swelling which uh, i thought could be easily operated upon then I talked to my teacher what to be done for this baby. So he said, well, just tell the parents, nothing can be done. As a doctor, it pained me to say nothing can be done. And that pain is still with me. Then in due course, uh, 73, I became a pediatric surgeon. And then we had a uh, surgeon, pediatric surgeon from uh, uh, Sheffield. There, that gentleman had worked extensively on this problem only, on meningomyelocele. And his experience also said that, uh, well, unfortunately, nothing can really be done, but we keep trying doing something. Then he said, we hope that if we do them early, immediately at birth, then there may be uh, some recovery the neurological deficit could be minimized. Then 1998 came the big news that uh, uh, from the embryo, the cells can be isolated. And these cells have the potential of forming any cell in the body. So they can repair any cell. That news, I mean, I was excited by, by that news. Some studies came that uh, these, these are called adult cells. So these adult cells lose the power of becoming malignant. Right. So in a way, it's a gain, win-win situation. And then realized people that uh, these, uh, though they are hemopoietic, but if they are kept in an environment which is demanding them to behave something differently, these very soon adapt to death. So many of these uh, bone marrow stem cells can adopt the function of neuronal cells. And this research has been done on lots of mice. And uh, lots of people have done on a spinal cord injury and found that uh, uh, these cells do help 
in reservation the spiral cord injury so this was a big relief to me i was convinced of my mind, in my mind that if i take out the patient's own cells and put in in the baby's own system why why should anybody be bothered about one day i heard that i have been appointed as the vice chancellor so i moved on to lucknow during sleep i had a idea i happened to take this idea came only after taking a round of a ward over there at uh, king george medical university which was a dedicated ward for patients with traumatic paraplegia i had that kind of a uh, I would say probably dreaming, or I don't know whether during sleep it happened. That uh, why don't you tie autologous stem cells on these? So they they are already a model. Sixteen patients were born where omen and where bone marrow cells were used with or without omen. Okay. And eight patients we used only the bone marrow cells. Eight patients we used with omen, but bone marrow cells. And the sixteen word moment of the stem cells autologous are used, and sixteen is nothing. So out of these sixteen, where we used, and those where we did not, in each group two patients died. Okay. So that was, in a way, disequal. We can't say that this kind of surgery added on or uh, operation added on any further mortality. The one which was which survived. So out of those fourteen that survived, two were able to walk without any calipers. Wow! And one was able to walk with calipers. I was living with the idea that why should we not be able to achieve ninety percent recovery? I'm living with with those results and don't want to die like this. That uh, why should not this work be done further and we could because or raising autologous stem cells is not so difficult it's neither so expensive and then it is the resource is always available with the patient yeah. so we have to only standardize it yeah. and meanwhile we come out with maybe the whole world is moving for uh, drugs or the cells could be made to patient available as drugs as drug. this might take another 20 years by those 20 years or 15 years there would be thousands and lakhs of patients who would be suffering this mistake so why can't we do it immediately that's what is my uh, my aim and that's what i feel the people should come out of that much of uh, ragmore that no it has to be like this 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 is simple medicine simple work and could be the life saving for hundreds and thousands professor uh, ashok kumar uh, i happened to meet him and he said so we can help you out and the only way that we, i could uh, get into was if i could become a phd student i said it's very much welcome i'll do that i will do anything that could be done to let me have my dream come true which has been make the paralyzed walk it's not today's Dreaming since 1968. That's just amazing, ma'am. How one idea and one um, the quest for one solution has driven you for so so many years, and it continues to drive you uh, in that manner. I want to go now, go all the way back to your childhood <laughs> and take you through your life once again. Actually, I want to go through your. I think everyone over here wants to go through your life through your words. So, uh, just to start off with. Uh, What were your favorite subjects in school, ma'am? Apart from science, if I may just already take the liberty of saying that. Well, all that I could recollect about myself is that uh, I was not a very uh, hard reader. Um, I would like to be uh, present everywhere. Mm. I, I would love to be in sports. Uh, I would love to be in. Uh, Competing with boys all the time. <laughs> Which your entire life also shows. <laughs> and um, I would like to act, have acting also debates. Wow. Antakshri. Yes, of course. <laughs> I was um, uh, the best uh, 
in Antakshi, this uh, district Mathra, I won the first place in Antakshi. I never knew there were district competitions in Antakshi. Yeah. <laughs> first Your all-time favorite song. Song, my God, <laughs> this is where I am. No, 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 no. Gunguna na hi kala guati thi, lekin mere pita ji chahte the, mere pita ji chahte the ki main gana bhi sikhu. So, sir, ma'am, time kahan se apne pakra? Wo kahan se iska wakhi mujhe pursue karna hai? Mujhe lagta hai ki aadmi ko ye nahi sochna chahiye ki maine kuch kiya. Perhaps. God has destined it. मेरी माँ कहती हैं कि मैं पाँच साल की छः साल की रहूँगी तब उनसे कह कहा कि मैं तो डॉक्टर बनूँगी। वाव। तो मुझे नहीं मालूम मुझे नहीं मालूम कि क्यों मैंने क्यों कहा और मुझे नहीं मालूम मैंने कहा। मैम अगर अभी तक ही आपकी पूरी जर्नी को हम दस दस साल में बांटे तो I want to know one one milestone step for you during each of those days. So let's try and let's try and do. No, I remember that day. When I was in primary school, I passed the board exam. After that, it's not easy to study. It's a big pressure. So this is how I would say go ahead. Okay. So this is how I would say God helps. In our village, we have a lot of family. Relatively, काफी well off थी और education का standard कि independent India से ही है था मेरे पिताजी मेरे चाचा जी मेरे पिताजी जो तो double M double M किए हुए थे मेरे चाचा जी M S C M S C statistics से और मेरे ताऊ जी scouts and guides commissioner थे U P state के तो environment ठीक ही था अच्छा था scouts guides के उसमें मेरे ताऊ जी ने बहुत अच्छा भाषण दिया और उन्होंने भाषण में कहा कि मुझे आज तक वो शब्द याद है उन्होंने कहा कि लड़कियों को पढ़ाना गांव के लोग थे वो भी आते थे ना पब्लिक के चाहते थे तो ये मैसेज देना चाहते थे कि लड़कियों को पढ़ाना बहुत जरूरी है लड़कियों को भेजा ही नहीं था स्कूल में क्योंकि जब आप उन्होंने विवेकानंद को कोट किया पहले अंग्रेज में कोट किया फिर हिंदी बताया कि वेन यू एजुकेट ए गर्ल You educate a family. When you educate a boy, you educate an individual. उसके बाद मेरा एक क्लास में आ गई एक दिन एक एक पास हुई तो मेरे पाऊजी के बच्चे हम लोग कमाइन फैमिली थे आज तक भी कमाइन है we have not separated तो मेरे ताऊजी का बेटा बोला मेरे पिताजी से कि चाचा जी सरोज डॉक्टर कैसे बन सकेगी तो एक के बाद नाइन्थ में बायोलॉजी चाहिए हमारे स्कूल में तो बायोलॉजी है नहीं यू नो ग्रेटनेस ऑफ माय फादर ही डिसाइडेड टू मूव टू आगरा ही थॉट कि आगरा में भी डिग्री कॉलेज है आगरा कॉलेज कॉलेज वहाँ तक किसी तरह से जुगाड़ हो जाएगी नहीं हुई ही टुक अप ए जॉब ऑफ असिस्टेंट स्कूल टीचर to get her daughter into uh, biology, pave the way for future medicine. So I say, whatever I am today, it's because of my parents and my husband. I was blessed with an extremely good person as a my life partner, extremely good. So let's talk about that phase when you got out, went through college and the education from. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The this the uh, the most exciting part is about moving from village to Mathra, Agra. Agra. To my Dona Tauji, they went, they came to Agra, and they started bombarding my father from both the sides. फिर मैंने कहा ताऊजी, आप तो उस दिन स्कूल में तो इतनी बड़ी बड़ी बातें कर रहे थे कि लड़कियों को जरूर पढ़ाना चाहिए ये लड़की एजुकेट गर्ल यू एजुकेट फैमिली हाँ। और आज क्या हो गया हाँ। जैसे ही मैंने उनसे कहा हाँ। अच्छी बात थी कि उसके बाद वो एक शब्द नहीं बोले वो भी नहीं बोले फिर बड़े ताऊ जी भी बिल्कुल नहीं बोले फिर दोनों चले 
मेरे गुरु जी थे वो कहते थे कि जब काम ज्यादा है तो इट इज दी रिवार्ड दी ओनली रिवार्ड ऑफ गुड वर्क इज मोर वर्क सो आई थिंक आई हैव बीन ऑलवेज मुझे ज्यादा काम फॉर्चुनेटली मिलता रहा जब मैं रेजिडेंट थी जूनियर रेजिडेंट वाइल डूइंग जनरल सर्जरी एम एस जनरल सर्जरी एवरीबडी हैज कॉल डेज यू नो ऑन माई कॉल डे आई विल गेट एटलीस्ट फाइव सिक्स और सेवन इमरजेंसीज सर्जिकल इमरजेंसीज विच नीड्स टू बी ऑपरेटेड अपन and uh, the emergencies are the main thing on which which have to be worked out by the resident doctor right. and in most of these emergency cases the senior person who is your teacher would come out come only for main uh, part of the operation occasionally it's not necessary that most of the time most of the time they would be able to advise do it like this do it like this once or twice they will come and once they have the confidence that you have learned the art of it or doing or doing it they would probably not come in so indirectly it is your responsibility to timely get the patient operated and look after the post op doing operation is nothing unless it is the post op care is looked into very well so in a way one day's work would keep me busy for the full one week right whereas the other colleague on his call day there would be hardly any patient coming so they would be craving ki koi to surgery karne ke mile to mere se log khush aabad karte the mere apne colleague hum you been inspiring so many people with you know your journey and the way that you have constantly uh, you know pushed through to continue pursuing your passion so if uh, if i were to ask you that uh, you know all these like uh, i wouldn't even say young people but a lot of people have come up with this sentiment with saying that ek age ke baad aap ye nahi kar sakte ya ye ho gaya ab jitna ho kar sakte the ya jitna karna tha utna hi ab ने कर लिया अब उसके आगे पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं है या अब हमारा पैशन खत्म हो गया या विगर खत्म हो गया तो ये ड्राइव रखने के लिए आप कोई मतलब टू आर ऑडियंस आल्सो हाउ कैन यू टेल देम हाउ टू जस्ट कीप पुशिंग बिकॉज इट्स रियली देयर इज नो लिमिट टू एनी थिंग व्हाट वी लर्न फ्रॉम यू नो आई आई थिंक यू नो एवरी इंडिविजुअल इज इंडिविजुअल इन इटसेल्फ no two persons are alike so i wouldn't say that uh, but still i would say if there is passion don't try to let it die right. uh, if you keep it alive god comes and helps you mm-hmm. coming to uh, i think anpur i feel it's god who has helped me right um professor ashok kumar is such a great person and the faculty over here is so good um i never thought i would be learning up for uh, this job this work over here and uh, i think uh, you would keep your passion alive so long you are positive about it right so uh, why to try to see when we have to see see the side of uh, success failure comes it has to be faced anyway so why face it before it has come right and uh, even if it comes then also uh, people say that failure makes the path for your success so i am positive 
I would not like to die without success. That's great, ma'am. That's amazing. You've come back to be a student after all these years. Uh, you've spent about a couple of months already in IIT. So tell us how that transition has been and how the new learning experience has been. Uh, well, I think it has been just wonderful to be in uh, IIT Kanpur. It's such a wonderful place and very dedicated uh, staff, uh, teachers, and faculty and students. Very high class. And so are the facilities over here. I understand IIT Kanpur is uh, extremely well in doing innovative research. That way I feel uh, very uh, grateful to IIT Kanpur as well as grateful to God for having given me this opportunity. Uh, I practically stopped uh, the deep learning for nearly now about 12 years. After retirement, I was in the BHU as a lifelong distinguished professor, but then it used to be more of a um, decorative and uh, unless you know you have some great responsibility, the kind of uh, uh, um, commitment that should come does not happen to come. So uh, responsibility and work go together. Uh, so, But I used to think I was um, very good uh, at rem remembering things, uh, except for names. Uh, then, uh, whatever, uh, as a student, I would uh, listen in the class, would be almost nearly 90%, more than 90% attend. So, with that background, I thought, I have a student, I have to go to the class, I have to go to the class. But little did I realize that I'm not the same. <laughs> right. uh, earlier, uh, once listen was almost an imprint. Right. Now, when read, I read or listen, it looks as though I have uh, understood. And, but then, if I am to recap, I mean, reproduce it, reproduce means recapitulation. Right. Then I'm finding that. Uh, so I'm trying to brush up, brush up my neurons, make them activate again. So to become a listener again and to be able to recapitulate and just produce it all over. Uh, the neurons need to be, uh, need exercise now. Right. So that's basically you're a new student, actually a student all over. Uh, probably for the first time, it was a new, different kind of a learning experience. Really. Yeah, this is a deep learning and uh, so much of explosion and new knowledge, which was not even at that time heard of. Yeah. So uh, that may be one more uh, stumbling block, block, but then uh, I'm prepared for it. I will, I will overcome it. I'm confident. It's really amazing. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us. It's been truly, truly inspirational and humbling to talk to you. And I hope we can get this opportunity another time with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.